have an emergency. Today on Rescue 911, terror in the classroom. He didn't give us any sign, he just goes, oh no. A brave teacher risks it all. I was afraid that Mr. Tillo would not be able to see. To save his class from tragedy, then one. Begin on January 31st, 1989, at Durham High School in North Carolina, just before school was about to start. We had been in the process of remodeling the math science building. This was the very first day that we had relocated back to the math science building. Durham High School principal Dr. Barbara Ellis and her staff were in a long-range planning meeting. Sodium borate, half pound. Sodium borate, half pound. In the chem lab, construction workers had dumped all the chemicals together in trash cans. Chemistry teacher Suri Shatila asked Matt Cook and four other honor students to help him put things away. These chemicals were not in good condition. Some of them did not have the tops, some of them didn't have the labels, and we didn't exactly all know what we were dealing with. There was a lot of corrosion everywhere, and so everything needed to be washed and cleaned again. Mr. Tutilla was telling us, please be careful, please be careful, because they're in really bad shape and they look like they were really, really unsafe. Iron wire, one quarter pound. Iron wire, quarter pound. He didn't give us any sign. He just goes, oh, no, and jumped down off the counter and grabbed the vial and ran out of the classroom. We just thought it was a joke because it was smoking. Nobody really understood what happened. But Suri Shatila knew that the smoking beaker contained sodium metal, a highly volatile substance that can react violently when put in contact with air or water. He ran to get the beaker outside before it exploded. All right, class, today we're going to talk about cell... By then, classes were in session throughout the building. Hundreds of students and teachers were at risk. When we continue... They said, I'm lying, I'm lying. I was afraid that Mr. Stiller would not be able to see, but I didn't want him to think that. It's off. <laughs> Follow unsung heroes saving lives and witness courage and compassion in action. Okay, I'll be in the back. I'm going to be in the back of the ambulance waiting for you. Paramedics, next on Discovery Health Channel. Biology teacher Mary Young was the first to respond to the explosion. He said, I'm blind, I'm blind. And uh, at that particular time, I put my arms around him, guided him out, and I kept saying to him, uh, no, no, you're not, no, you're not. I led him on back to the back of my classroom and held his head over the eye wash. No one knew quite what had happened, but Mary Young's student ran to the principal's office to get help. What I could see of his eyes, they didn't appear to be the right color. I was afraid that Mr. Stiller would not be able to see, but I didn't want him to think that. Emergency? The call came into 911 at 8.31 a.m. Can you tell me what's wrong, please? It was a secretary. She sounded confused, anxious, and frustrated. It was obvious that the person called was getting secondhand information and could not give any further help. I immediately dispatched Rescue 2. All of you, let's go. Let's evacuate. Toxic fumes had filled the front entrance area of the math science building. I was trying to flush until the paramedics arrived. 
He never lost consciousness. You know, he was uh, frustrated, crying, and frightened, and I was too. When we were evacuated, everyone was taken out to the football field, and people were playing around, you know, because it was just like another fire drill. So it was just, it wasn't a lot of chaos. It was just people were talking and everything. When the ambulance drove up, silence covered the field. I wanted to know what was going on. Every Five minutes after the call came in, paramedic Robert Lucas and his partner arrived at the scene. Tell me what happened. Do you have any idea what kind of chemical it was? I don't know. It's going to be okay. Nobody was able to tell us exactly what the chemicals were or exactly what had happened. So we had to assume that it was some type of an acid or an alkali and go ahead and remove the patient's clothing to keep any um, chemicals that were on his clothes at the time from continuing burning into his skin and his chest and back area. The patient's eyes were bloodshot and had a gray appearance when we first opened the eyelids and started the irrigation, but it had a, a crinkled appearance to it. It looked like a wadded up piece of um, saran wrap. Somebody get that box for us. There just wasn't much that could be done for him. The only thing we could do is continue to irrigate and you know, save what was left. But I really didn't believe that he'd ever see again. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. I was frightened when I thought about what could possibly have happened. If he had panicked and the vial had exploded in that laboratory, we would have had a chain reaction that would have been tremendous. And it's no doubt that the children who were with him, as well as Mr. Tatilla, would have possibly lost their lives. All I wanted to say was, thank you, Mr. Tatilla, you know, for saving our lives, you know. So everybody was, it was, it was a really emotional time. Less than a year later, Suri Shatila's sight has almost returned to normal. His own quick thinking may have saved many lives, but it was the prompt action of his fellow teacher, Mary Young, that saved his eyesight. The one thing I learned after this accident is how many people come forward and how many people are so friendly and so helpful to me. I never estimated that I have so many friends who are inquisitive about my welfare and about my safety. That, that is the greatest pleasure. It indeed takes a very special person to place the lives of others before your very own. And that's what happened on January the 31st. Mr. Chatilla never once thought about himself. The only thing that he thought about was the safety and welfare of his students and his colleagues. And for that, we will always be grateful.